don't matter when you're defending yourself in a real street attack. And frankly, I think that's kind of easy to say when it's not you who's like eyeballs the chest with some giant mutant who's like about ready to pick you up like a rag doll and just slam you to the ground, right? In fact, I think a lot of people won't even think to throw a punch when you really look at like videos and stuff like that. In a lot of cases, they don't even fight back when they're facing somebody who's bigger and stronger than them. But when you can't talk your way out of a confrontation or you have no way to escape, the possible repercussions of just giving in should tell you that this is not an option. But again, easier said than done, right? Especially if you're older or maybe you're a wee bit out of shape or you really are of a smaller stature and you really don't think you can generate enough power behind a strike to take out someone who looks like an un unmovable wall. Well, we're about to change all of that. And I'm going to show you how to hit so hard that your attacker is not even going to know what hit them until they wake up long after you are gone. So welcome, everybody. This is Jeff Anderson, Executive Director of WarriorLife.com, the Warrior Life Academy. And with us today to show us some strategies for how you can increase your striking power, no matter where you're starting from right now, is once again, Tim Larkin. So Tim, welcome back to the program, man. Hey, how's it going, Jeff? going great uh looking forward to this this is uh i know a lot of people have a lot of questions about this stuff so i'm looking forward to you sharing some of the strategies then uh listen everybody if you haven't like maybe listened to one of our podcasts with tim in the past or, or attended one of our workshops tim is a former special warfare intelligence officer who was assigned to a special group of senior seal operators with the task of researching and developing a more effective form of hand-to-hand -hand combat training than what they were currently using for the spec ops units and the methods that they needed had to be mastered in a minimum amount of time. It needed to be integrated with other weapons training. And of course, it had to be like deadly effective in real life or death combat out there on the battlefield. Now, Tim identified this fighting system and then went on to help modify, update, and implement the training, not only with the military units, but also later when he branched out on his own to further refine those techniques and use them with law enforcement and civilians who really wanted skills that they could master very quickly, but would also work if they were facing a real life attack. Now this system ultimately became the target focused training combative system. And today it is, um, it's now one of the most sought after fighting programs around the world. It's used by military law enforcement. Like a lot of people are out there to get it. I've personally trained it myself. And uh, it's, it's one of my favorite systems that I've ever trained in since 1997. So you can learn more about Tim and Target Focus Training over at his website at www.targetfocustraining.com. All right, so Tim, I know a lot of people do have questions, uh, especially when they, they think about what it takes to really go up against somebody that is bigger and stronger than them, about how hard can I hit? How, like, how do I hit harder? And how much does it really count? So I guess I'll start there. Like, What's the biggest misconception that, that you think people have about striking hard about hitting somebody and having an effect I, I think i think probably just one thing that everybody looks at is um they'll look at somebody who's bigger faster and stronger and they'll say man there's nothing i can do you know this guy whatever the monster is that you're thinking of you know you'll, you'll put it you'll put it in there and what's really interesting is when you know you're talking about my background um I was just to let everybody know, they probably were thinking, how the hell did an intelligence officer get in, you know, with the teams and do all that? Well, I was going through SEAL training and I was flying through real quick and I was doing really good. And I'll give you the very short version of this. Everything that changed in my life involved an injury to the human body that my bigger, faster, stronger status couldn't handle. Uh, I blew my ears underwater. I went into vertigo and that was it that ended my career as before it even started to be a SEAL officer. And they kept me in. I had a very strong martial arts background. I was liked uh, in the community and they kept me in the community um, and sent me to the intelligence school. And I came back as a special warfare intelligence officer. And I did my whole career in the special operations community. So I just want to give everybody that background, but it was injury to the human body that did that. And there's two things that, that make injury happen. And that's knowing where to put your effort and then to put it in with the maximum amount of power that you can do. Um, the second part, the first part is pretty easy. I can show you where to do it. The second part is where I think most people believe that they have to be bigger, faster, and stronger. And yes, would that be helpful? Sure, it'd be helpful. But 
when we're talking about striking with maximum force, the universe doesn't care whether that power that you generate comes from 185 pounds of muscle or 185 pounds of fat. It's, it's 185 pounds. And so whatever you are carrying around on you, you know, weight wise, that if you learn how to properly deploy it, can go into any of these areas of the human body that, that uh, you know, we can identify. And, and that's hard for people to wrap their heads around because probably one of the biggest concepts I can give people, I was just interviewing um, a guy named Michael Thompson. He's one of the founding members of the Aryan Brotherhood. Just straight up, just probably one of the, the deadliest fighters Folsom and San Quentin's ever seen. This guy got in, well, he's been shot. He was shot 22 times. Um, and he, he's just, you know, he was just, phenomenal in, in how he was able to fight. And I'm not glorifying him. I'm just saying there's very good information we got from that. He's reformed his life. Why it's important to you. He understood how important body weight was when striking. That's where your power generates. Oftentimes when you're thinking, well, I can't do that much. And you're thinking about throwing your arm or throwing your leg at somebody. And yeah, if you're just deploying your arm and your legs, that's not very much. It's a very small part of your body weight. What's important to understand is that when you do that, how do you move your body into somebody? And that's extremely, extremely important. And it's mass in motion through a vulnerable part of the human body that does all the damage. So two things I need you to, you, you to do right away. I need you to think like a predator thinks. And I'm talking like these alpha predators that I'm constantly talking to. They don't look at somebody the same way that you and I look at them. They look at everybody the same. And what do I mean by that? They don't look at this at somebody and say, wow, that guy is so much bigger than me, so much stronger than me, so much faster than me. They look at the similarities in the human bodies. They sit there and go, oh, there's his throat. There's his eye. There's his knee. There's his groin. There's his bladder. They, they see the similarities because they understand that nobody can protect certain areas of the human body and that everybody's susceptible to injury. If you know how to then use all of your body weight, deploy all of your body weight into the shot, it's extremely devastating. Um, so you're, you're, you know, your people are probably saying, yeah, you know, I, I, how do you, how do you do that? And we can get into that, but I, I don't want to jump ahead, Jeff, in case there are other questions that you want. I have a, I have a little presentation that I'll do at the right time, but um, you know, is that a good start to where we need to go? Yeah, I think that it sounds like what you're saying is that as far as like the misconceptions that people have is number one, that they that size and strength do matter, but that they don't matter as much as people think like they defeat themselves mentally, um, first of all. And then I think that actually keeps them from maybe devising how they would defend themselves or how they would create injury in, in another person because they've got kind of defeated themselves um, already. Um, that's, that's kind of like my, my take out of it. Um, I think the, even, the thing, I think, I think probably to clarify a little bit is that, that issue of the 185 pounds and the universe not caring. I think that's extremely important for people to understand. Meaning if you weigh 95 pounds, if you deploy a strike that generates at least your 95 pounds into that very vulnerable area of the human body, think of one area of the human body that you would like 95 pounds thrown into as hard as possible. Um, and that's, that's where these people, uh, who know how to do this, just, they understand, they understand how to do that. And you're carrying this around all the time. That's, what's so great about your body weight. Your body weight is always with you. And then learning how to deploy it into the strikes is that that's what, what makes you devastating. Mm. I think sometimes people, they do more to sabotage their efforts than they do to kind of maximize, uh, maximize their efforts, especially if we're talking about they've defeated themselves, maybe even mentally when it comes to actually like physically creating enough power to be able to affect somebody without getting into like yet into like the, how, the, how to, how to's um, what do you think that people, the way that they normally strike, whether that is just the average Joe who, all he's ever had is the shoving match on the playground all the way up to maybe martial artists who have trained in different types of striking techniques and things like that. But what do you feel are some of the things that people are doing wrong in their techniques that's holding them back from being able to, to generate more as much force as they possibly can? 
most of them are depending on speed. They, they do speed uh, only. What do I mean by that? I mean, they will stay in one place and throw their arms out or they throw their leg out. And all that's being deployed is that, that area. And it's not doing enough damage. Um, and they've had it done to them, especially if they've been, you know, if they are a martial artist and they've been sparring in any way, shape or form, you see a lot of them. I, what, what I do when I look at somebody and they're training, I rarely do I look at their upper body at first. The first thing I look at everybody is I, I watch their feet. I look where they are standing and I can tell whether or not there's going to be any power behind anything that they're doing. Most people stand. Uh, I, 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 I did a blog post a while ago and I talked about, um, you know, uh, where you need to stand. And basically most people like to stand at a comfortable distance where they can see everything. A okay fighter, a, a pretty decent fighter will go toe to toe. He'll want to be at least toe to toe to get him when he's striking the killers, the people that really know how to take people out. They go through people. They step through in their strikes. And so you'll, you'll see this. If you watch any of the old uh, Joe Frazier or Mike Tyson's, you know, anybody that's a really devastating striker, say in boxing or combat sports, next time you look at them, don't watch um, the strikes themselves, watch their feet, watch where they're standing. And you'll notice that they're making sure that their body weight is deployed in each one. What does that mean? That means they step into somebody when they're coming in. They're making sure that their belt buckle passes through the area that they're striking, meaning wherever the person's standing, they strike until they feel their body physically go. A lot of times what people will do is they'll, they'll strike. And as soon as they make contact, they'll pull back. They won't actually step into the strike. I caught this at a very young age. I learned this. I was extremely lucky. And um, I can kind of probably share a visual uh, of, of what completely changed the way I looked at everything. Um, my grandfather was a huge boxing advocate when, when he was a young, uh, you know, when he was a young guy, he, he fought and he educated me very early on and on boxing because that's what was his favorite thing. So I became extremely interested in that. And one day, um, you know, for those of those those of you who don't know, my father was an officer in the military. He was a Navy officer. We moved all over the place. And oftentimes he was deployed and my mom would get sick of my brother and I. And if it was a, if it was a rainy day and she couldn't kick us out to go play, she'd take us over to the Navy library and, you know, drug dump us off there. And, you know, we'd sit there and we'd read, read books all day. And I would go into sports section and I would always pull box on, on boxing books, karate books, anything they had having to do with, you know, martial arts or fighting. I was just fascinated by that. One day I picked up this, um, this book and it was called championship fighting by Jack Dempsey. Now I knew of Jack Dempsey because my grandfather would used to tell me what an amazing striker he was, how hard he could hit. And what was so interesting about Jack Dempsey is when he won the title, he won it from a guy who was a man mountain. Jack Dempsey never weighed more than 187 pounds as a heavyweight fighter. And yet he was known as one of the hardest hitters of all time. He knew how to deploy body weight into each strike. He wrote that book. He, he, was, he fought in the 20s and 30s. He wrote that book in the early 60s because he was really disappointed with how boxing was going. He said, hey, boxing is a great way for any young man to learn how to do self-defense, because back then it was mostly boys that were doing this. Um, and he said, yet the, the art, the, the sport of boxing has changed to where now everybody's just trying to get points and win on points rather than learn how to knock it out. And he said, listen, there will be very few boys that can ever become you know, real competitors in boxing, but every boy can learn how to protect himself if he understands how to use his body weight. And so he, he tried to do a couple of graphics and this, imagine me, I'm 11 years old and I picked this book up and I'm flipping through it because I'm not even reading it yet. What stopped me in my tracks was this graphic. It showed a baby and he literally wrote this. He said, you know, to understand the power of, of you know, a force in motion and body weight in motion. He said, imagine a 200 pound trucker, you know, back then 200 pounds, it was a big guy. Um, he said, a 200 pound trucker is walking along the street and a baby falls out from a three-story window. 
a 10 pound baby falls out a three story window. And as the baby's falling, it lands literally on that trucker. And he said that would crack the, 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 the trucker's head open and, pop, and pop, you know, probably kill him. He said a 10 pound baby just, just falling, free falling with no other, he goes, we'll, we'll generate that kind of power. He goes, that's the idea behind body weight. And I, I was just, I was shocked by that. First of all, the graphic was crazy. And then the idea behind it, it hit me. I said, wow, 10 pounds, you know, throwing, you know, with that kind of force behind it, how do you do that? And so he started talking more about that. Um, he then shared another, another graphic that helped me understand um, how to generate power. And his big thing, he, he, he said, imagine a sledding. He goes, what makes a sled work? And he said, you know, when you're going down, you know, the gravity uh, drop, he called it the, 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 we call it the gravity well, when you drop into a strike. He talked about the, the sled goes down an angle, builds up speed, and then it hits a straightaway and just shoots through. And he talks about how you generate that in, in strikes. And, and that, was, that was what was really, really important. And when you, he was known for something called a drop step where he would literally step forward and, and all of his body weight would be into every shot that he did. And what was so important in, in us understanding that is we all can do that. We all have body weight and it, does, it didn't matter, you know, whether you are, are strong or fat, um, strong or, or just out of weight. It's if you have the body weight and can deploy it. I had a situation where we had a guy that used to train with us. He was, um, he was definitely obese. We used to call him Mr. Five by Five. He goes out, he trains with us for a couple of years, and then he goes on, becomes a lawyer. And he's over in the UK as, as an attorney. He gets jumped outside of the tube by two guys. First guy comes up to him. He, he goes to grab his, uh, his briefcase. And our guy just sits there and just drops, he drops in and just hits him as hard as he can, hits him right in the side of the neck drops a guy the other guy just sees this he's shocked he drops his knife and he runs away because they did not expect this guy to be able to take care of himself and we asked him well, what happened then he goes well i ran after him for a little bit and then i realized i'm no runner so i'm done and he just went on his you know with his day but what was so interesting was even though he hadn't trained with us in a couple of years and he was you know he, he, he was good he understood hey these guys are close in. It's easy for me to drop my body weight and step through. And that's all he did on that. And yet, had you put these guys in the ring with him, he, he never would have lasted with them at that point. So body weight deployment is probably one of the most misunderstood and ignored um, things when it comes to learning how to protect yourself. And, and what's so great about it is when we did this with the military, we created a system, you know, now, which is now target focused training. But the whole idea behind the premise was, hey, listen, here's your assumptions. Your assumptions is the military operator that you're training has been in country for at least 60 days. Whatever conditioning he had at that time is gone because he's been sleep deprived. He's dehydrated. Um, he, his oper operation tempo has just kept him up all the time. So he's exhausted. So the only thing he has is his brain, his body, and whatever he's carrying. And that's where we had to start from. So everything we had to teach had to involve body weight striking because we couldn't rely on strength and we couldn't rely on conditioning at that point. And so it's just always been integral to how we train to teach everybody how to do a body weight strike. And it's amazing when you get people that understand that we've had women under 100 pounds get snatched up and they were able to deploy their body weight into the shot of a much bigger guy 230 pounds and drop him why because he did not expect it and they knew not only where to go on the human body but they also knew how to twist and drop in all of their body weight into the shot and so again you know do you want to get involved with somebody who's bigger faster stronger than you absolutely not um, is it impossible for you to take somebody out like that? No, not at all. But do you need some knowledge? Absolutely. But this concept of body weight deploying into the strikes is probably the most important thing. Most people get caught up in the actual punching or the kicking. And oftentimes they, they do it, but they do it at the wrong distances. They don't step through. They will say kick, they'll learn to kick 
and then they'll pull their leg back rather than deploying their leg all the way through and kicking through the target, punching through the target. We talk about um, old boxers will talk about, you know, striking all the way through the elbow, meaning once the strike is deployed, they continue it like you're punching him with your elbow. And that's how they get all that distance into the strike. And that's how they get all that body weight into the strike. Um, it's a very simple concept. And it's a devastating concept once you understand. And it's incredibly surprising to have a smaller person uh, be able to deploy body weight into a vulnerable area of a much bigger person's uh, body and to see the look on their face when they do not expect it. That was what was so interesting. If it, when, you know, I went back and watched the fight of Jack Dempsey and Jess Willard when he won. I think it was like 1911 when he, when he won. Um, and when you watch that, this guy just towered over him. He was like 6'4". Jack Dempsey, I think, was barely 5'10". And he was much smaller. This guy was just a man mountain compared to him. It looked like Dolph Lundgren and Rocky, you know, that, that one time, um, that kind of a, a physical displacement. Yet you just watched every strike that this guy, he stepped into it and stepped right into this guy's body and just absolutely battered this guy to the point to where he gave up. He didn't even get knocked out. He just gave up because he couldn't move his body anymore. Um, so again, in self-protection, there's nothing more important than you being able to use everything that you have. And probably one of your, you know, if you want to call it your secret weapon in deploying strikes and hitting hard, it's all about the employment of body weight. So that, that kind of leads me into um, if there's any sort of hierarchy, maybe it's not even a hierarchy, but I mean, it's, it sounds like a lot of these things really kind of blend together. So the like kind of the major factors that are needed to really maximize the amount of power that you have in your strike. So as I, as listening to you, if I were to like put those in, in, in like an order, like not, uh, not a sequential order, but like using your, your body weight, like basically um, you know, there's a difference between hitting somebody with a uh, you know, like a, what do they call it? Like a finishing hammer versus a sledgehammer, right? Like there's more, there's more force behind you. Like if you, but you could tap, you could tap in a finishing nail with a sledgehammer just by, by hitting it very, not very hard. And it sounds like one of the limitations that people have is that, and, and I think this is very, I think this actually happens a lot where people, again, going back to psych psychologically, they don't think they can win, or they think that if they, if they fight back, this person's going to like do even more damage to me, not even realizing that you know, they could do just as much damage. It's not like you're going to piss them off or whatever. Like your goal is, is, is wrong at that point. Um, but that you've got to commit to it, right. That you've got to, you've got to. Um, and, and so I think if you ever seen like somebody go to strike someone, but you can tell they really didn't put a lot into it. It was just kind of like a, Hey, please leave me alone. Sort of like a, a strike uh, hoping that the whole thing would end. So I, I think if I were looking at these factors, you know, you, the use of body weight, in order to generate more force behind when you do actually make contact, go through the target with your uh, with your striking weapon, whatever that whatever part of your body that is. Uh, use a drop step to maximize your body weight in every strike. And then one we didn't talk about, and I'm not sure if this is like whether it's a factor or how we, how we put this in there, but like where you hit is important because you also talked about how. Um, you know, this, this person struck somebody in the side of the neck, they were, they were out. Whereas you, we've seen even bigger guys like throw tons of punches at each other, just kind of they're landing, but they're not really having much of an effect on somebody. So those seem to be kind of like the major factors that are involved with powerful striking. Is there, yeah. is there a difference uh, like order of those or a better way to, to frame that? No, that, that, that it's really, I, I think the biggest issue is people don't uh, step through their strikes. They, they're taught to, especially a lot of times they're taught to do what Jack Dempsey was talking about in his book was they're taught most of us to do those, those get away from me type strikes rather than stepping in and committing into the strike and putting all of your weight through it. It's that hitting through the target area, meaning say you're going to say I'm going to do and I, and I want to take somebody's ear, you know, I want to burst the eardrum and put, put them into vertigo, you know, I get the semicircular canals uh, emptied and then the person's in vertigo uh, to do that. I, if I go to strike the ear, I'm thinking of coming out the other ear when I do that strike. I'm not thinking of hitting it and pulling back. I'm thinking of striking all the way through. 
on the on the on the strike. And that's probably where most people I've seen get into trouble. They do these static strikings. I see a lot of stuff up. Uh, um, and, and I have a lot of friends in Krav Maga. I do. I got a lot of great friends in there. But one of my biggest problems with Krav is they do all this static, you know, speed movement. Two things are wrong. There's no body weight in a lot of those strikes. It looks impressive. And also, it's usually not in a specific enough area to get a real injury to the human body. So there's there's a they, they lack the knowledge of anatomy of how to put trauma properly in the human body. And then when they are putting strikes into the human body, they're static strikes, meaning the force doesn't have time to deploy in. It just it hits and they pull back, hit, pull back. Um, when you see somebody that steps through and really gets that strike, it's just devastating. Um, you see people absolutely collapse when when the body uh, absorbs a full body weight strike. Uh, and so, you know, the two things that you've really identified are spot on. Number one, where do I put the effort? I would say that's number one. Make sure you know where on the human body to get results, regardless of strength. There are areas of the human body. That's why we call it target focused training on our area. All I do is deploy, you know, sit there and put all the areas of the human body that you can get a result from in, in trauma. Meaning if you strike that with the you know, comparable force, you're going to get a guaranteed result because the trauma is going to be so great that the person has to respond to it akin to you stepping on a sharp nail, you know, your, your, your reaction to that, you pull your foot away immediately, whatever you're doing, you've, lose, you've lost all control of your body, your brain's not controlling that it's an autonomic reaction um, to the trauma. And that's what the person does, they, they pull it back up. And that's what you want to do with body weight strikes, you want to make sure that you're going into an area, say you're striking into, you know, we talked about the side of the neck, but let's talk about maybe striking into the throat. You want to make sure that when you're striking the throat, you're imagining your fist or your forearm coming out the back of their neck. And that's the type of step through striking you, you that you do. I do it very slowly and, and controlled with my clients at first and everybody gets used to it. But it's that idea of making sure of, you know, I always watch where are they stepping? And if they're not stepping through the target, I know they're not going to be able to deploy body weight. And so it's, it's a very, it's not a hard concept once you start doing it. And once you're properly trained, you just have to make sure that you understand it. And it's surprising. People are surprised what they're able to do and generate. I tell a story about when I was, uh, I was working out at a gym one time and I was pulling some plates. Off. I was pulling a 45 pound plate off of, uh, off of the bar. And I was distracted. This girl came by in spandex and just, I just looked right away. I just was there as I'm pulling and I'm not paying attention. But what, what I forgot to, to uh, do was take the 25 pound plate off in front of the 45 pound, pound plate. As I'm pulling, the 25 pound plate drops from about my chest height, drops right on my foot and literally breaks my bones in the foot when, when I'm sitting there. Unaccelerated 25 pounds, just the gravity just dropping right on my foot. Got to the point to where I just, I, you know, I was controlled. I didn't go crazy or anything. I just, I reacted to it. I sat down. I knew not to take my, my shoe off because my, my foot would swell up, but it caught me. And I remember being, you know, yelling at myself for being an idiot and, you know, just thinking it was really stupid. And even though she was very beautiful, it was not worth breaking my foot. Um, but then I, I was sitting there just going, my God, 25 pounds, not even accelerated. I mean, imagine if you took 25 pounds and you threw it as hard as you could into that vulnerable area, it would have shattered my foot at that point. And that's why I try to tell people, you know, when they imagine that they can't do anything, they have to imagine what is your body weight. And if you deploy that correctly, you can, you can do tremendous amount of damage. So there's two things that happen. You have to have good structure, you know, the stepping through, you have to make sure that there's no weak areas in your legs or body. You know, when you come through, you don't want to be bent in any way, shape or form. Because that will, you know, the, what, what you want to create is you want to create a situation where if this is my back foot, I want it planted on the ground as the strike is landing. You know, you step through and strike because you're going to hit that area of the human body. He, his body is going to give a little bit of pushback, force back. You're then going to, your force is then going to go down. 
bounce off of your leg back up because you have good structure and that area of his body is then going to give way. He does all the work. That's the other thing people don't understand. They think I can't hurt this guy. He's so much bigger, stronger than me. What you, what most people don't understand is you don't have to hurt all of him. You just have to get that one area and then he does all the work and people go, well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Think about the last time a fly hit you in the eye. Now, a little fly is flying by, zooms by, hits you in the eye. Watching people's reaction to that is hilarious. You know, they, they sit there, they just huge, dramatic reaction, and they pull back. So the question I have for you, did the fly come by? And for me, I'm, I'm, I'm almost 250 pounds. Did it knock my 250 pounds back and react out of that? No, I did that work. Why? Because it hit an area of me that is vulnerable and I don't want damaged, and I am reacting to that. And I wasn't injured, but imagine that, just a little fly hitting me in the eye and the dramatic reaction that I do from that. Now, you couple that with you, a fully grown adult, going into that same eye with all of your force and the result that you're going to get. So you have to, we, we've all experienced this in life in various times. You know, we usually call it an accident or, or something um, you know, something that catches us off guard. And we have these dramatic reactions to the situation, even though what hit us didn't necessarily cause all of that happen. It happened within our body because we don't want that area of our, our body getting damaged. And so drilling people, what's really crazy is to see somebody after a, a seminar who gets it and they've completely transformed themselves. And honestly, I have a harder time with bigger people deploying their body weight than I do with smaller people. Smaller people get it, you know, for the most part. They go, they go I want all of me in every strike, especially women. They just, once you let them go, we had a woman last week in seminar. First day, she was a little tentative. And then I had her work out with one of my other instructors and he started putting a little bit into her and it just got her. So then she started stepping through people and she was just a terror by the end of it. And she saw it. She, she saw the switch in her body. She felt the structure. She felt how much more powerful it was to actually step through people and, and really collide into it. Um, it. It's something that if you're not getting trained in deploying body weight in your combatives, you're probably giving up one of the greatest weapons that you carry with yourself every day. Yeah, it makes total sense. Um, so with, with these principles now, what are, what are some ways that people can train this so that they can go from where they're at right now and become a more powerful striker? Probably uh, the best is to work with another human at first. It's not about actually uh, getting and hitting a bag as hard and as fast as you can. Actually, that's really a detriment a lot of times in learning how to, uh, in learning how to deploy body weight. What's much more important is that when you're working with a partner, you're getting the feedback of stepping through the body. And you can do this slowly, correctly, accurately at first. You, you don't have to be, you know, beating the crap out of each other to learn this at the beginning. That's not how anybody learns. Drop steps, any of that are all learned slowly, correctly, and accurately first, and then deploying it. And then you'll see after a while, then you can go back if you want to go hit, say, a heavy bag to see the difference you then can go back and start striking with, with full body weight. One caveat that I'd put in is remember the hand, everybody likes to use fists at first. A lot of uninitiated people want to use fists. When you're deploying body weight, that's all of you. You want a structure that's really solid. Can you learn to make a fist correctly and be able to deploy it? Yes, you can, but you have to remember there's 27 bones in the hand. It, it really is not designed to be a meat club. And you have to really practice that. Whereas if you just switch down to like, you know, the break of your wrist on your pinky side of the elbow, you've got the ulna bone. It's just bone and skin. There's nothing to prepare. There's nothing to get ready. And you can hit it with all the force you can generate. Striking with the elbow, same thing. It's all about making sure you have good structure. You don't want anything weak in your structure. You want to make sure that everything is, is, uh, is there because any weakness in your structure the force will deploy out of it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you want to make sure that you deploy all of your force into him and he has to move. So again, you know, the training methodologies are pretty easy. Um, it's just, it's the idea of giving yourself permission 
to do the work and step through. And you, if you tell yourself, you know, Jeff, you said at the beginning, if you tell yourself, oh, I can't do this, then you're right. You can't. Um, if you tell yourself you can, well, now your body is going to start and your brain is going to say, okay, you're telling me I can do this. How do I do it? And then you just start making it second nature. And like I said, we have about 50, I think we got 51 instructors now or 52 instructors. That's right. We just had a new one. 52 instructors in, in uh, target focus training. And I would say across the board, the ones that most of the instructors don't want to work out with are usually our smallest instructors. You know, we've got one guy who uh, he's akin when you work out with him. I, I, one of my guys said it best. He said, my God, I feel like I was fighting a spider monkey who had a sledgehammer in one hand and a chainsaw in the other hand, because everything, this guy knows how to put his body weight into every strike. And he comes in now he's not being brutal. You know, he's taking care of his partner, but you get out of the way pretty quick. You give really good reactions. So um, it, it couples the body weight is extremely important, but you got to couple that with where on the human body to put your effort. And so there's a, it's a twofold thing. And that's what bypasses bigger, faster, stronger. When you can put trauma into the human body where the brain is overloaded and taken out of the equation because the body's trying to protect itself and respond to it. I gave the example like stepping on a, um, a sharp object or touching a hot surface. Your body automatically responds to that and takes the brain out because that's what makes the other guy dangerous. A bigger, faster, stronger person without the use of their brain is not dangerous. It's the person that can think and move that continues to be dangerous. The quickest way to take that away from them is deploying body weight into a vulnerable part of their body. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I think this, this, this gives people really something to chew on as far as like comparing how you may currently be out there training, how you might be fighting, how you uh, training that you may have taken already and applied, applied, <laughs> this science to it. And I understand like it might be a little bit hard for some people to visualize. I think the drop step is one I've seen, I've seen it before. And it wasn't something that I think this, I think this is part of the evolution also that you, that you've, um, that you've brought to this training for like God last few decades and stuff. And so I listen, everybody, uh, the best way to do this is actually to see it. You can go over to Tim's website and there's, there's going to be some, some materials there that you can check out. You can, um, in fact, what I recommend you doing is going over to, we'll put, we'll put up a, a special link, but if you go to warriorlife.com slash TFT, and that'll take you over to some of the training that I recommend of, of Tim's also. And I know he has a, a special event that's going to be coming up. He's going to be live streaming this. And it really, it allows you the opportunity to ask questions, get demonstrations, um, yeah. even do it long distance where you can, where you can live stream these things, um, accompany them with the, maybe the DVDs or other video training that he has available on his website. Um, it's a different concept. So even if you've done like Krav, I don't care what it is, Taekwondo, I don't care what it is, right? It's the science behind, I, I think the, this biggest part, like, like Tim was saying, even like a fly can make you, can, can take you out. And so it's how do you chain those together also, especially as you are going through somebody, you're going to be shown other targets. And, and the, I think the thing I liked best about training in Tim's system is how empowering it is confidence wise, because the way that he trains, the way that he shows you how to train with another person, if you have a partner, um, how to trust, how to train alone, if you don't have a partner the visualization techniques, all of those things, like in the way that he trains, not just like, here's a, here's a spot that, that makes somebody explode. It's, it's in the training itself that becomes a real confidence builder. And by the end of it, you, it's like, it's like part of who you are and you have a confidence there of knowing this other person in front of you. If somebody is stupid enough to really woof on you and, and become a threat to you and you have to unleash there's just a knowing there's a, there's a, an instant spotting of where you're going to strike. You get your body mechanics in where it just becomes second nature for you. Once you understand the concepts and you start going through all these things. And so I highly recommend you went over to warriorlife.com uh, slash TFT. 
and uh, I'll make sure that that goes over to where you where I think you should really like start your maybe your journey over there in Tim's stuff. Um, Tim, before we take off, is there anything like that we didn't cover that you think is important for people to to know? No, you know uh, the. I, I just want people to understand that it's not hopeless. You know, it's not meaning seeing a bigger, faster, stronger person. Um, you're. It's just there's information that you don't have. And again, we're not being glib here. We're not talking about uh, a situation where, you know, uh, you're in a ring with somebody and that's, that's a completely different situation. It's about a predator giving you an opportunity and knowing how to exploit that opportunity because they don't think you can hurt them. And, and that's just a huge gift if you, if you can get that. And deploying body weight and knowing where to put that, um, that trauma and how to use your body tools correctly it's all critical. And again, if you had training, I want everybody to understand this too. TFT does not replace what you're doing. What we do is we give you a template of trauma, a template of, of how to make sure you get results. If, if you can get those results from something that you learned in Taekwondo or something that you learned in um, Krav or anything else, that's all great. I, I've had people from all sorts of disciplines, you know, come in and train with us. And again, it doesn't change everything. It just gives you new information that you can use in your training. Yeah. Yeah. Really great point. Awesome. All right, everybody. So, uh, so definitely go check out more of Tim's stuff over at targetfocustraining.com. If you want to go over to his main website, or um, I'll go ahead and set up some, some training that I think is going to really work well for you. You can go over to warriorlife.com slash TFT and check that out there. And until our next broadcast is Jeff Anderson saying prepare.